Welcome back to the report. A Sudanese opposition leader, Hassan Abdullah Tarabi, died over the weekend at the age of 84. Tarabi was a well-known Islamic thinker and mentor to the current Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir. Tarabi's political policies and his Islamic rulings made him a controversial figure, as our political correspondent, Khalil Charles, reports. Hassan Abdullah at Tarabi was a giant of Sudanese politics. His knowledge of Islamic sciences, Western languages and political activism made him one of the most well-known and respected politicians and Islamic thinkers in and outside of Sudan. In the 1980s, Tarabi broke away from the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood and formed his own version of the movement, which he called the Islamic Front. For years, he built up a band of loyal followers. In 1989, he secretly orchestrated a coup d'etat, which deposed the elected Prime Minister, Sadiq al-Mahdi, his brother-in-law, and brought an army lieutenant, Omar Hassan al-Bashir, to power. Behind the scenes, Tarabi was the brains that directed the operation and policies of Omar Hassan al-Bashir's revolutionary government. And throughout the 1990s, he was effectively the supreme leader with his outlandish interventionist foreign policy and his invitation to all Arab passport holders to enter Sudan without visas. The famous policy allowed Osama bin Laden and Carlos the Jackal to enter Sudan, and when an assassination attempt on the Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak and the bombing of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania took place, the finger was pointed at Tarabi and the Khartoum government, and Sudan was placed on a list of countries sponsoring terrorism. Although the open-door policy was repealed, most of bin Laden's men remained in the country until 1998, bin Laden having left for Afghanistan in late 1995. The 1990s were marked by the civil war against the South Sudan, which broke away from Sudan in 2011. Before the separation, Sudan's economy grew exponentially, with oil revenues allowing infrastructural projects and new investments to forge ahead. But in the early 2000s, Tarabi's attempt to curb the powers of the president was met with his removal as the Speaker of the National Assembly. He was imprisoned and placed under house arrest, which were a feature of the years leading to his death. But it was Tarabi's involvement in the Dalfour crisis and his support for Dr. Khalil Ibrahim that brought him into the greatest conflict with the government. As usual, Tarabi worked behind the scenes, but the popular National Congress Party, which he created, had its newspaper banned, and various pacts that Tarabi made with other opposition groups brought him into further conflict with the Bashir government. In recent years, Tarabi was one of the very few opposition politicians who openly agreed that President Bashir should be handed over to the International Criminal Court in The Hague to face trials for war crimes. Tarabi's supporters are now left without a man who has steered the opposition against the government for the last 10 years. His influence and stature is unrivaled, and finding a replacement to lead his movement will prove difficult. His party, the Popular National Congress, may now lose its political leverage in the country, and some may return to the government ranks or abandon the struggle for change that they would like to see in the country. Khalil Charles, The Report. Well, our reporter, Khalil Charles, who uh, made that film, is uh, joining me now in the studio. Khalil. Um, so he got to 84, so his death can't have been a, a total surprise. Was the political system not prepared for it, even so? No, I don't think it was. I mean, he, he was always in good health, Tarabi. Uh, he had a, an incident back in the uh, 80s where he was karate chopped and the head knocked out by somebody who was uh, opposed to his policies. And that uh, caused uh, some kind of uh, uh, problem. And he was taking quarters home for, for, for a long while to try and resolve those problems that were caused by the strike. But um, since then, he's been in pretty good health. And uh, he's had uh, very long periods of uh, incarceration, uh, whereby he was in prison, uh, imprisoned and then moved to his house under house arrest. And all of that because of his opposition to, to the, the Bashir government that he helped originally to create. Mm. So, I mean, that latest spell in prison 
from the 2000s onwards, really. Does it mean that the political followers have much clout left still? Well, this is the question. I mean, Tarabi is a, a giant of a figure in terms of the politics in Sudan. He's been there since 1960, and he's seen the, the changes in the, in the different uh, governments that have gone, uh, the, the, the um, different uh, military governments that have come in and gone out. For some time, he was the justice minister under the, under the uh, um, Numeri, Nimr, Gov, Numeri, who was the former president, his government, and he was also a deputy prime minister for, for a while. So he's been, um, really, as I say again, he's been very, very important to the politics of, of Sudan, and internationally as well, because uh, as a thinker, he was moving towards um, agreement with other um, modernist type uh, thinkers who um, have, uh, you know, brought, brought music into, in, into, into, into Islam, also changes of the marriage laws in Sudan, also changes at the understanding of the Hadith, all of which brought him a lot of op opposition, but also gained him a lot of favor with people who thought that he was really quite a visionary. And his books have centered around basically political and economic ideas and how to form political economic Islamic structures. So he's been quite a quite a, an important figure in the, in the whole of the Islamic world. And the alliances that he's, he's made uh, across the Islamic world, including with Malaysia and Iran for a, for, for a bit of a time, uh, meant that uh, he was always in the forefront of, 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 of arguing that there should be changes in the modernization in Islam, things that uh, did not impress a lot of people in, in Sudan. And I have to say that the people who loved the, the, the Torabi, they really, really were behind him. He was an idol for them. But equally, he had people who loathed him and didn't uh, like at all his meddling in, in, in Islamic uh, uh, fatwas and his uh, pol political uh, uh, nuances that, 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 that he, of course, was passing on to the young. Ha so yeah. give us some sense of what the, his support, how powerful his supporters are at the moment. Well, at the moment, I think the, the, it's very hard to say what they can do now without him, uh, because at the, at the, the height of his power, he had his own uh, very, very uh, personal uh, um, band of people who, who used to protect him, and they were given favors, cars, etc., to, 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 to move around. He was also very, very keen to get women involved in, and, and, and gave women some very strong position. I think in that sense, he, he was an inspiration to many of the women in, in the country. But since uh, his uh, removal from power, their power has waned, and, and they've become a, a, fa a fraction uh, of what they were years ago. And now I think it's very difficult to see how they're going to make any impact on the on, on the situation as it stands at the moment. Mm. Uh, do you think that particular kind of profile in terms of his ideas that you're describing, was that something that came from the fact that he obviously bridged the um, phases of um, anti-colonial struggle from the 60s through to the post-Iran um, revolution phase, Islamic figure, um, but a modernist at the same time. W was that a fusion of those two elements of, of anti-colonialism? That's a very good point. It was indeed. I mean, that was the mark of Tarawi's success uh, to the people who, who followed him, in that he was able to give modern understandings of Islam, not to the dogma and, and the kind of rigid, uh, uh, less pragmatic uh, understandings of Islam. And this, coupled with the fact that he was educated here in, 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 in Oxford University for his degree and got his doctorate out of Sorbonne, people felt that he had an understanding of Western culture. He had an understanding of, of, of the colonial, if you like, um, map or brain set, uh, the way people thought. And he was bringing a very new fusion of those ideas into Sudan. And um, in his writings, he was very clearly uh, uh, trying to bring a new awakening about the way, way politics should happen within Islamic countries. Mm. Uh, you used the phrase a couple of times in the report that he was someone who worked behind the scenes. But at the same time, he was a speaker of the parliament, as you said, a, a minister. Those are sort of front rank roles. Explain that a bit, little bit. Well, actually, when the coup happened, it, he was actually, um, you know, in, in, in power. And he was one of the opposition leaders there and, and, and very well known. Um, so he, when the coup happened, was arrested. By the, by the people who, who, who performed the coup. But of course, he had directed that, and he, he made it quite clear later on that uh, he had orchestrated the coup. And Umar um, Bashir was one of his, was one of his students uh, uh, and was very much part of the, the, the National Islamic Front movement, which uh, Tarabi created. So he was always trying to give the impression that, oh, this was a nas national and popular right uprising. But in a sense, what it was, it was him agitating from behind, uh, you know, so to make it seem as 
as though you know people were, were moving in a certain direction. And this is where the changes happened because Tarabi then felt that in a sense he needed more recognition for what he'd done. And it was a very successful 90s, 90s uh, and then in the beginning of 2000s because they got the old program going. The old program had been, been abandoned in, 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 the, in the 50s uh, and the, the 60s. And now the, he had regenerated the old program, got the Malaysians in, got the Canadians in, got the uh, um, Indians later on to, to come together and, 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 and exploit, export the oil. And that so, what really gave him his, 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 his credence, if you like. So was it a sort of personal um, falling out with Bashir or was there something more to it than that? He wanted to change Bashir's powers in terms of the way a president was elected. He said that the president should no longer come from the army. And that was the, the point at which uh, uh, the Sudanese uh, army, led by uh, President Bashir, encircled the, the, the parliament so he couldn't get out and uh, uh, put him into, into, into house arrest because they felt at that time that those changes were too sudden and the army, of course, which has dominated the politics of, of, of Sudan, uh, simply couldn't accept that they would be sidelined in that way. But Tarabi was a reformist. He was trying to move towards uh, a point at which multi-parties uh, could, could take part. Well, certainly that was he, the way he put things. Uh, and, but others were suspicious of the fact of that. Others were suspicious that Tarabi was, in fact, moving to get himself I I elected in, 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 into popular power. And to marginalize by saying no one in the army can be a president, to actually marginalize the president, and so the president could no longer run again. So that was the feeling behind those uh, uh, movements in the early 2000s. So will the government and, and perhaps more conservative elements now think they have a freer hand with him gone? Well, the government will certainly feel that uh, it, there is no one who could uh, give them quite as much problems as Tarabi did. Um, and it's, it remains to be seen whether there are other movements in Sudan. But uh, as things stand, the, the National Congress Party have a very strong hold on uh, a power there. Uh, the Umar Bashir is saying that he will not stand again for another election, but he said that last time. So it could be that he will change his mind again and uh, extend the, the, the power that he has in the, in the country. And you must, must remember, for many people, Umar Bashir is the only leader that they've seen and, and the only person that they, they recognize as being a strong and influential person. But he has a lot of liabilities against him. And of course, Tarabi was one of the people who said that Umar Bashir should be tried for war crimes. And that's what happened in Darfur, even though, of course, Tarabi was uh, behind some of the agitators who were creating the problems in Darfur for, for, the, for the government. And the government were very, very heavy handed. They, were, they, they did uh, some ter terrible crimes towards, to, towards the uh, citizens of that area. And so today, um, what, we'll, what we'll see is that people will try and regroup. The oppositions will try a, 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 another way. There has been, uh, in the last few years, a call for m a dialogue, national dialogue or a conference for, for people to get together. But this, in a sense, uh, will take some time and we'll see uh, probably uh, more people uh, calling for, for, for change. But uh, that's yet to come, I should think. And Khalil Charles, thanks very much for that. I'm afraid it's all we've got time for. And indeed, all we've got time for on this episode of The Report. <laughs>